the 21st president of Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, Dr. Jonathan Holloway. Good morning, everybody. What a glorious, glorious morning it's turned out to be. Thank you, Chair Angleson, for those very kind words. Enough about me, though. This is all about you. Graduates, families, guests, members of the boards of governors and trustees, administration, faculty, staff, and alumni, I welcome you to Rutgers University's first in-person commencement ceremony since 2019, and it feels wonderful, doesn't it? I love seeing so many people on the field and so many more in the stands. Now, I will confess that I'm a total fan of the pageantry associated with commencement celebrations. All of the ritual, the solemnity, the music, the balloons, the photographs, the traffic jams, the lost parking registrations, the uninvited guest who orders the most expensive meal at the celebration dinner, the toddler's meltdowns, the parents' meltdowns. It all makes for one glorious and memorable day, and it is a glorious and memorable day, especially when we think of all those other days that preceded this one. I'm not going to belabor the challenges of your individual journeys, the specific contours of those paths are for you to know. But I will acknowledge the fact that you successfully navigated the most uncertain moments in higher education's history. Because you have arrived here, despite everything that stood in your way, I feel comfortable asking you to give a little bit more of yourself before I confer your degrees upon you. To that end, I have three requests. The first request, even though there are tens of thousands gathered here in person, I ask you to take a private moment and think of someone who isn't able to be here today. We don't need to know the reasons why. They will range from the mundane to the tragic, but you will know the reason. Speak their name to yourself in a moment of silence so that you and they can spend some part of this day together. Thank you. The second request, think of someone who is not a member of your family, someone who has helped you get to this moment. How they helped you might be very private, but saying that person's name out loud is a well-deserved public declaration of gratitude. So on the count of three, wait for it please, say that person's name. Now, there are roughly 15,000 graduates at, for the university, so I expect that this will be a cacophonous moment, but what a glorious piece of noise it will be, an untuned choir of appreciation. So on the count of three, say that name. One, two, three. Now everybody out there is wondering, was my name said, was that name said? <laughs> Finally, each of you knows that you are here because of hard work, brain power, determination, and a mixture of prayers, tears, and laughter. And no graduates, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about your mothers, your fathers, your aunts and uncles, your completely annoying brothers and sisters, your sweet abuelita who always had a piece of candy in her purse, or perhaps your abuelito who was generous with unsolicited life advice your nephews and nieces, and in some cases, your children. All of them have been part of the support network that helped you get here. And this leads me to the final request. Thank them and do it with unabashed enthusiasm. Let your accomplishment be theirs as well. Stand up, stand up, find them in the stadium, shout their names, show your love.
Beautiful. Beautiful. So I think you've now done the most important thing you can do today, express your gratitude. You've done so silently. You've done it through saying a name. A few of you said a few extra names. I heard that. And then you've yelled it to your entire family. This was beautiful for me to watch, and I hope it was beautiful for you to experience. When I was in your shoes some 33 years ago, I found myself facing my beautiful day with a complex set of emotions, joy, confusion, some anxiety, lots of pride, and a healthy dose of uncertainty. I've come to understand that all of this is normal, but I didn't know that then. What I recall perfectly, though, was the comfort I found in one of the commencement speeches. On that occasion, the university president quoted the closing lines of a talk titled The Educated Citizen by politician Adlai Stevenson. He said, your days are short here. This is the last of your springs. And now in the serenity and quiet of this lovely place, touch the depths of truth, feel the hymn of heaven. You will go away with good old friends. And don't forget when you leave why you came. These lines spoke to me in 1989, and I hope that they will resonate with you today. As you leave this campus, do not forget why you came. Think of the friends, the connections, the education, the discoveries, even some of the heartbreak. All of these have made you what you are, and all of these need to be respected for what they are. Love and triumph and accomplishment, after all, are complicated phenomena. They have rough spots and are imbued with contradictions and flawed logics. But the funny thing is, the more that you respect the difficult aspects of your journey, the more you are able to touch the depths of truth, and the more likely you will be able to feel the hymn of heaven. Speaking of the depths of truth, when I revisited Stevenson's speech in preparing these comments, I discovered something unsettling. My university president movingly invoked Stevenson's closing words, but there are other parts of the educated citizen that merit your attention. One moment in particular stands out. Stevenson said, our record as citizens in recent years has been something less than perfect. Too often our citizens have ignored their duty to their government. Too often they have not even bothered to vote. But this is not all. Participating in government in a democracy does not mean merely casting a ballot on election day. It means much more than that. It means an attitude, a moral view, and a willingness to assume a day-to-day -day responsibility. Stevenson proceeded to decry the laziness of so much critique in his moment. Calling a politician a scoundrel was easy. Saying government was to blame required little thought. Stevenson urged his audience to change that phenomenon and practice. He pleaded with them to use the power of their education to be a force for good. As I said a moment ago, my discovery of this section of the talk was unsettling. Why is that? Because Adlai Stevenson offered these thoughts in March 1954. On the global stage, this country was fighting a cold war with anti-democratic nation states. On the national front, the Supreme Court was two months away from roiling society when it would issue its opinion in Brown versus the Board of Education, the school desegregation decision hailed by many for being socially just, but also criticized by others for judicial overreach. While so much has changed and changed for the better since 1954, an honest assessment of this moment shows us that the past was prologue. Whether our attention today is focused on international hotspots or whether we are trying to determine how local landscapes might change in the wake of looming Supreme Court decisions, we cannot deny that we are facing a myriad of challenges. My question to you is this, what are you going to do about it? Adlai Stevenson asked his audience the same thing, encouraging every one of them to become actively engaged. 68 years later, I echo that request. I'm not going to tell you what 
position to take. But I worry for democracy if you choose to sit by idly, solely speaking via social media about the latest outrage and finding fleeting self-satisfaction in subsequent likes and possibly hashtag virality. I beg of you, augment your socially mediated life by being an educated citizen. Fight for your values in person. Register to vote, then actually vote. Help others register to do the same, then fight for the right to have easy access to the voting booth. Get involved in local politics or nonprofits or service agencies. Advocate for those who are routinely left behind or ignored. Get them involved too. This is not an easy thing I ask of you, but nothing worth having comes easy. Democracy does not come easy. Your freedoms do not come easy. Toward the end of this ceremony, I will confer your degrees upon you. When I do so, you will hear me reference the rights and responsibilities that come along with your diploma. These are not idle words. As Rutgers alumni, you will have the rights that accompany being a member of this very special community, but you will also have the responsibilities of upholding the best aspects of that community in order to make it better, more robust, more accessible, more inclusive, more prestigious, more accountable. Accepting these responsibilities as a condition of benefiting from these rights is what educated citizens do. Graduates, I have asked a lot of you in these closing moments, but I know you're up to the task. After all, you have proven to me time and again that you can handle anything placed in front of you. This has been a joy to watch and an affirmation of your talents and potentials. As you carry Rutgers with you into the world, hold your head up high. Remember everyone who helped you along the way. Reach out to help those who need a bit more assistance. And finally, touch the depths of truth. Feel the hymn of heaven. You will go away with good old friends. And don't forget when you came, when you leave, <laughs> why you came. Congratulations, class of 2022. Now, it is my pleasure to recognize the members of the two governing boards of the university who are seated with us on the dais. They join us in congratulating our graduates and their families on the academic achievements we celebrate today. So members of the Board of Governors and Board of Trustees, please stand up. One of the most prestigious honors any university can bestow is an honorary degree, a degree which is conferred honoris causa, or for the sake of honor. Through this public action, Rutgers acknowledges individuals whose exceptional achievements support the ideals of the university and serve as an example for our students, alumni, and society. I am pleased to introduce the distinguished individuals who will receive honorary degrees this year. A detailed accounting of their accomplishments can be found in your commencement program. Our first candidate is Dr. Robert L. Barchi, who will receive an honorary degree of humane, an honorary doctor of humane letters degree. Dr. Barchi, welcome back to Rutgers commencement. President Emeritus of Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, you served with distinction as its 20th president from 2012 to 2020. In your first year, you guided the nation's lar largest higher education merger when nearly all of the former University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey was integrated into Rutgers. Your administrative and medical expertise proved invaluable as you helped establish Rutgers Biomedical and Health Sciences and shepherded the university's agreement with RWJ Barnabas Health to create New Jersey's largest and most comprehensive academic health system. Rutgers Health, one of the first academic healthcare provider organizations to integrate a full range of healthcare specialties under one umbrella, 
brings Rutgers expertise and research to the citizens of, the New, Jersey, of New Jersey and boasts New Jersey's only National Cancer Institute designated comprehensive cancer center. You launched the university's first comprehensive strategic plan in nearly 20 years and a corresponding physical master plan to equip Rutgers to be best in class in education, research, service, and healthcare. Through modernization of technology, you strengthen the university's academic, business, and administrative systems with a renewed focus on the student experience. Under your leadership, Rutgers achieved its first billion-dollar fundraising campaign and completed more than $2.5 billion in capital projects, including the Honors College at Rutgers University, New Brunswick, and signature academic buildings on all campuses. Rutgers is deeply grateful for your immeasurable contributions to elevate the visibility and prestige of the university. Dr. Barchi, please join me at the podium. Rob, <clears throat> excuse me, Robert L. Barchi. Now, therefore, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the boards of governors and, and trustees of Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, I am pleased to confer upon you honoris causa the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters with all rights, responsibilities, privileges, and immunities appertaining thereunto, and in token whereof I present you with this diploma and direct that you be vested in the hood, emblematic of the degree. Our next presentation is an honorary Doctor of Science degree, which will be presented to Dr. April Joy Erickson. Your story is one distinguished by firsts. The first African-American woman to receive a PhD in mechanical engineering from Howard University. <laughs> Calm down, folks, there's more. <laughs> The first African-American female civil servant to earn an engineering PhD at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. And the first person of color to receive the Washington Award from the Western Society of Engineers. During your almost 30-year 30 tenure at, with NASA, you have made noteworthy contributions as an aerospace engineer, technologist, project and program manager and executive. Among your many accolades, you have been named one of the most powerful women engineers by Business Insider. <laughs> and are the 2022 recipient of the American Society of Mechanical Engineers Ralph Coates Rowe Medal. An inspir <laughs> you literally don't know what that medal is. <laughs> but I love your enthusiasm. <laughs> An inspiration to us all, you have been an outstanding proponent of underrepresented groups in STEM fields, actively serving as a mentor to countless young women and minorities, and supporting them with a curated pipeline of scholarship, grant, internship, and employment opportunities. You have lent your expertise to aspiring students, teaching at Howard University, the University of Maryland, and Bowie State University. You have given back by serving as the chair of the Advisory Council of Howard University's Department of Mechanical Engineering, co-founding advisor to the National Society of Black Engineers Dynamic Mathematical Visionaries Chapter, and a board member of MIT's Industry Advisory Council for Minority Education. Beyond your admirable success, your story is one of social change as you exemplify the pursuit of a dream that once seemed impossible and as you encourage others to do the same. Dr. Erickson, please join me at the podium. April Joy Erickson, now therefore by virtue of the authority vested in me by the boards of governors and trustees of Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, I am pleased to confer upon you honoris causa, the degree of Doctor of Science, with all rights, responsibilities, privileges, and immunities appertaining thereunto. And in token whereof, I present you with this diploma and direct that you be vested in the hood emblematic of the degree.
The next presentation is an honorary Doctor of Science degree, which will be presented to Dr. Alondra Nelson. Award-winning researcher, author, editor, and lecturer, you serve as the Harold F. Linder Professor at the Institute for Advanced Study, where your pioneering expertise on the intersection of race, inequality, science, and technology inspired the coronavirus syllabus, a collection of books, essays, and medical and cultural resources to inform discussions of not only the public health aspects of COVID-19, but also the social effects of the pandemic. Highly regarded by your peers, you served as president of the Social Science Research Council and are an elected member of numerous national academies, including the National Academy of Medicine and the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. You have lent your expertise to the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, and the Russell Sage Foundation, among others, and have contributed to national policy discussions on inequality and technology. In appointing you director of the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, President Joe Biden has called upon your vast interdisciplinary knowledge to lead six policy divisions in the promotions of equitable access to health care, investment in research, advancement in technology, and progress in clean energy. Your scholarship challenges the cultural stereotypes and assumptions that inform the misconception of a digital divide based on race rather than access. Your prize-winning book, Body and Soul, illuminates a less documented side of the Black Panther Party, that of a disadvantaged community taking care of its own members with little to no resources, a campaign to address sickle cell anemia, and the belief in health as a basic human right. Your most important book, your most important book, The Social Life of DNA, is a perfect marriage of anthropology, sociology, and the history of science, exploring the notion that genomics can be about more than pinpointing causes and cures for disease. It can also provide insight into history, shape social and political movements, and inform the future. Dr. Nelson, please join me at the podium. Alondra Nelson, now therefore by virtue of the authority vested in me by the boards of governors and trustees of Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, I'm pleased to confer upon you, honoris causa, the degree of Doctor of Science with all rights, responsibilities, privileges, and immunities appertaining thereunto. And in token whereof, I present you with this diploma and direct that you be vested in the hood, emblematic of the degree. And now I am pleased to introduce the presenter of the 2022 commencement address, Dr. David J. Remnick. He will be addressing the class of 2022 momentarily, but first I'd like to present his honorary doctorate of letters. Son of New Jersey, author of six books, <laughs> surrounding applause of one, author, <laughs> son of New Jersey. There you go. <laughs> Author of six books and esteemed journalist, you are frequently called upon to provide expertise and insight into the psyche of Russian leadership, past and present. Born from your on-the-ground reporting in Russia as Moscow correspondent for the Washington Post, your George Polk Award and Pulitzer Prize-winning book, Lenin's Tomb, deftly weaves historical research and eyewitness accounts and has become an authority on 75 years of communist rule and its collapse. Your books have chronicled the lives of former President Barack Obama, Muhammad Ali, and other notable figures in history, compellingly portraying their personalities and the backdrops within which their stories take place. You have contributed to the New York Review of Books, Vanity Fair, Esquire, and the New Republic, have been a visiting fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations, and have taught at Princeton University and Columbia University. As staff writer since 1992 and editor of The New Yorker since 1998, you have written many articles for the publication, including reported pieces from Russia, the Middle East, and Europe, as well as profiles of Bill Clinton, Catherine Graham, Bruce Springsteen, and Ralph Ellison, among others. Twice named Editor of the Year by Ad Age, you have ensured the continued excellence of the publication 
as a purveyor of high caliber journalism, satire, art, and culture, worthy of 55 National Magazine Awards and more nominations than any other magazine. Under your direction, The New Yorker became the first magazine to receive a Pulitzer Prize for its writing and now has won six, including the Gold Medal for Public Service. In your role as the host of the New Yorker Radio Hour, your sphere of influence reaches far and wide to educate and enlighten your audience. Mr. Remnick, please join me at the podium. David J. Remnick, now therefore by virtue of the authority vested in me by the boards of governors and trustees of Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, I am pleased to confer upon you honoris causa, the degree of Doctor of Letters, with all rights, responsibilities, privileges, and immunities appertaining thereunto, and in token whereof I present you with this diploma and direct that you be vested in the hood, emblematic of the degree.